Welcome to the Fran Review. Very first ever. The Fran Review. I want you to say that again. The Fran Review. I think it's a pretty glorious name. I think it's amazing. You know how we got that? You, we took my, my name, Francois, and Andrew's name, Andrew, and the word review, and we combined it all into one little sexy package. The Fran Review. And if you haven't guessed already, uh, we review movies. Well, yes. This is the first time. So we, don't, we don't do... <laughs> we this, haven't done movies, this, per se. We, we do movie. Movie. We have reviewed yes. movie. Um, and this week's movie was... Captain America Civil War. Pretty awesome. Yes. I had a fucking... It, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I mean, we'll go into depth about what we thought later on. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's worth mentioning that uh, Andrew and I felt that because we partake in a lot of movies and it's something we're very passionate about is is movies and uh, uh, filmmaking and stuff, uh, we thought it might be a good idea that we, we get our own show because Brad has his own show. He has Brad Play. So we thought, why don't we have our own show um, where we review movies because that's something that we're Yeah, and it totally, it totally wasn't a thing that we came up with at three in the morning because we didn't have anything to, to put put out for today's friday content absolutely not, uh, not it, it's been months in the well making. calculated well calculated months months have gone yeah. everything we do it's more planning than any of you could probably ever muster uh in advance i mean people who get married i don't think uh plan as far and ahead as we usually just, just do for a single show even yeah just just for one yeah. single show every podcast you've ever seen or if you've ever seen a podcast those are year months sometimes years yeah. in in the making so i mean almost never impromptu never not once i can't remember that yeah. would be ridiculous who could who yeah. could possibly do such a thing um so you'll notice a a distinct absence of brad um which is great which is good it's really good so that it'll be less it'll be way less annoying and way less ugly yeah. which is something we've been trying to trying to sort of do yeah. is we, we've been wanting to be less ugly so I feel like we've... I mean, we're, we're trying at least. Yeah, exactly. We're trying. So, I mean, have we reached zero ugliness? I don't think so, personally. But, I mean, like, we're getting there slowly but steadily. One thing that's different about the Fran review as opposed to other movie reviews you might have seen is that, first of all, there's two of us. And secondly, we've both written out our reviews without consulting with each other. So, there might be some overlap. Maybe there, maybe not. We might have very similar opinions. We might not. We don't even know. We talked about it a little bit on the drive but for the most part we've kept it pretty uh pretty ambiguous as to what our opinion of, of the movie is mm. other than that we both like it mm -hmm. that's one thing that's uh frustrated me a long time with a lot of reviews is like uh you get you get sites like ign and they review uh movies and they review video games and what they'll do is they'll appoint one guy to essentially represent the views and opinions of a company towards one piece of uh, media, which I think is stupid. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, how could one guy express the views of an entire group? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and especially to put, like, a like a th six out of ten on something. Like, that's such a yeah. direct number. So, I mean, that, so like Andrew was saying, we, we both, we didn't really consult each other before we wrote our reviews and before we gave our reviews so that we could give as unfiltered an opinion as we could, and we're giving two different opinions that haven't really intersected too much anyways. Uh, so you can get a bit of unbiased journalism, I guess. These opinions only reflect ourselves, not yeah. a group of people, which I think is important in reviewing, and I, I just, I wish more mm. reviewers did that, but I, but whatever. I mean, technically we are 66% of prehistoric productions. 66 point. So a majority, a vast majority of our company, we could say. Yeah. Holds. does feel this yeah, way. it does feel this way. <laughs> um, and then last thing I think it's important, I personally love holding, standing in judgment over things and providing uh, a grade. That's a thing I, I, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't share that opinion, especially when it comes to movies. You were, got into a little bit about, you know. Yeah, not as much. So so I, one thing I've always felt about movie reviews and just like opinions in general is like, is like to grade a movie to essentially give it a number, like let's say a, a whatever out of 10, I feel it's kind of weird because it's like, it's like you're, you're, you're essentially saying that this movie is this. It's like, it's this good. And I feel like it's very 
opinion based and it's very like on a like a person to person case. So it's like it's like what is good to one person might not be good to another person and it's like it's 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 odd to I guess put a put a movie in that sort of a, a box. And like I said, it's like it to me it's fine when it's one person because if one person says I think this movie was a 7 out of 10. It's like all right you express your own opinion, that's fine. But I guess I have a problem when it's, like, groups of people, or it's, like, one guy yeah. representing the opinions of a group of people, or a review site saying, this movie, or it's, like, a very famous review site who or are reviewing it for the masses. Yeah. And they say, this movie's a three out of four. That's what you should think about it. And it's like, but what if I don't think it's a three well, out of four? Well, it's also, like, what is that? Like, those are such arbitrary numbers. Yeah. Like, what do they really mean? They don't anyways? mean anything. Yeah. So, anyway, so, so, uh, I guess... <laughs> Without further ado, uh, please enjoy our review, and uh, we'll see you after you're done listening to our ramblings and opinions uh, to give you our final scores. Holy fuck did I love this movie. Now, for any of you who know me, you know I'm a fucking nerd. Comic books, video games, movies about guys wanging their swords, not getting laid, all that good, great, geeky shit. I've been this way my entire life. It's not going to change. Sorry, Mom and Dad, your son turned out to be a Bill Gates type. But hey, remember, Bill Gates turned out to be super successful, a billionaire, and he probably gets laid, like, like once a week, because I think he's married, or like once a month, or like however much, like, married people. I don't know how married people. I don't know. So hey, I'll probably be a billionaire, right? Or, and successful, eh? Eh? <laughs> Moving on. So... Prehistoric Productions' first ever movie review in our wonderfully titled show, The Fran Review. That's a name that exists that we came up with. You know what? No, it's great. It's great. You know, we thought we took it. We took we took a lot of time. We really thought about it. It's great. Fuck you. Swayed. Captain America: Civil War, the third movie in the Captain America franchise, and the thirteenth film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, I went into this movie with very high expectations, and in my personal experience, high expectations exist only to be dashed. Uh, not unlike going out on a date with somebody, you think it's a date, they think that you're just hanging out as friends, your soul is crushed, or whatever. Went into it with very high expectations, and I'm actually quite happy to say that I was very impressed by this movie, despite going into it with high expectations. Expectations were high. You think we'd be pretty played out by that whole superhero thing by now, eh? Well, not me because I love that shit. But you, right? Like you're not gonna spend your hard-earned money to go see another one of these movies, are you? Well, yes, you are, and this is why. Not exaggerating, this is probably my third favorite Marvel movie to date, just behind the Avengers and Captain America: The Winter Soldier. And I mean, you can't really count the Avengers because how do you recapture? How does any one filmmaker? Or I guess in the case of this movie, how can any two filmmakers cap recapture the fucking wonder of seeing Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and the Incredible Hulk all in the same movie? Fucking, you can't. That's six fucking different creative properties, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking six. So, let's say this is my second favorite Marvel movie, not including the Avengers, because honestly, you just can't put that on the scale, because it's just it's way too good. Captain America Civil War, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, uh, two brothers. Uh, it's a direct follow-up to 2015's Fantastic Ant-Man, and a direct sequel to 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier. It begins in the aftermath of three mega-tragedies, number one being the alien attack on New York that we saw in the Avengers movie. And number two being the attack in Washington DC uh, by the hell carriers that we saw in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And number three being the attack by Ultron on the fictional city of Soko, or I think it's a city, country? The fictional city of Sokovia in the movie Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. As such, the world is a bit nervous about the unchecked and unchallenged nature of the Avengers who were directly involved and in some cases directly responsible for a lot of the deaths that happened during these uh, mega catastrophes. Shit really hits the fan when uh, Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen, uh, kills a whole bunch of civilians trying to dispose of a bomb. Doesn't really help their whole case with the previously mentioned mega disasters. 
Thus, the United Nations draws up the Sokovia Accords, which in the movie are essentially documents that would give the UN total control over the Avengers and all of their doings. And we have our conflict. On one side of the fight, we have Captain America, uh, Bucky Barnes, or as, as he's known in the movie, the Winter Soldier, uh, the Falcon, Scarlet Witch, uh, Ant-Man, and Hawkeye. I loved seeing Paul Rudd on screen, probably one of my favorite things about this film. Uh, really enjoyed seeing the character of Ant-Man, having him as the comedic relief, you know, breaking up all the seriousness. Everyone's kind of sad, and there's lots of people who died, and collateral damage, and you know, all this just serious shit going on, and there's Ant-Man and Spider-Man providing all this awesome comedic relief, this funny banter, and you know, probably one of my favorite parts of the film. You could, you know, you could even say that uh, they didn't really even bug me. A terrible joke, but uh, as a new dad, uh, one of my main responsibilities is uh, doing as many terrible dad jokes as I possibly can to embarrass my son in the future. And then on the other side, you've got the much more intimidating team, Iron Man, uh, War Machine, The Vision, Black Widow, and newcomers to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Spider-Man and Black Panther. Captain America's team, as you could guess by his namesake, believes in the maximum amount of freedom. So they spit in the face of this new legislation put out by the UN, which puts his team in direct conflict with Iron Man's team, who believe that the Avengers have gone unchecked for too long. So there you go. That would be my first big reason to go see this movie. It's something original. Not since the days of Monte Cristo or Star Wars have we seen such interesting and dynamic conflict. Not just good guy versus bad guy, but we've got brother against brother. We've got hero against hero. We've got Avenger against Avenger. It really gives the movie a strong presence and it makes you feel for the protagonists in a, in a whole new way. I mean, we've all seen a hero fight a bad guy a thousand times. And you know what I figured out? The hero always wins. Shit's not so black and white in this movie though. For the first time in recent memory, you got heroes fighting heroes. And not only heroes fighting heroes, but you've got established heroes fighting other established heroes. Like 13 movies established heroes. You know these characters and you know what they can do. So when Captain America swings a punch at Iron Man or Iron Man fires a laser at Captain America, you fear for the safety of one or the other because you know what that can do to them. The banter in the film, I loved the this, the banter between the characters, between the superheroes. Uh, thought it was super well done, just well timed as far as pacing in the story as well as just uh, the comedic timing of it. My personal favorite interaction, I'm probably stealing this from Francois, but uh, I loved the interaction between uh, Spider-Man and Captain America and the little nod that they gave to each other about being from being from both being from New York. Second reason, Spider-Man and Black fucking Panther. Although this movie primarily serves as a sequel to the last Captain America movie, it also serves as sort of an origin story uh, for the character of Black Panther, who is fucking awesome. He adds a very welcome dose of diversity to the Avengers team. I mean, with him not being white or from the United States. Uh, and his suit is one of the best designed I have seen so far in a superhero movie. We just get a taste of him in this film, but I cannot wait for his own solo outing, which I think Marvel has officially slated for like 2017 or something. I'm not exactly sure. Super cool to be introduced to Black Panther. I really enjoyed that. Uh, it's a character I knew very little about before the movie and getting to see his origin and just kind of see what they're starting to do with that character. I'm really excited to see what Marvel's gonna do with his storyline in the future. So I was very skeptical uh, to see this new portrayal of Spider-Man, just because I'm such a huge fan of the Tobey Maguire version. And also just seeing a much younger portrayal of Spider-Man, I wasn't sure how that was gonna play. But uh, again, I was very pleasantly surprised. Thought it played very well, uh, again, in as a comedic relief. And then also just um, seeing Spider-Man as, as, as actually as a teenager. And uh, I just really thought that Tom Holland did a fantastic job. And I'm just really excited to see more of Spider-Man, more of this version of Spider-Man, and hopefully see a Spider-Man movie in the not too distant future. Now on to Spider-Man. Now I know what you're gonna say. You've seen Spider-Man, you've seen him twice already. You've seen him played by Tobey Maguire, and you've seen him played by Andrew Garfield. But trust me when I say you've never seen him quite like this. I've gotta say, out of the three interpretations we've had so far, uh, the Tobey Maguire movie, the Andrew Garfield movie, 
and the Tom Holland movie, this, that's the guy who played him most recently, this kid absolutely takes the cake. He's funny and relatable, and he steals every fucking scene he's in. And he has a scene with RDJ. Not like a group scene. He has a fucking solo scene, just him and RDJ. And he steals the scene. That's fucking saying something. So for nothing else, uh, go see the movie for the new Spider-Man. You won't fucking regret it. Young Tony Stark blew my fucking mind. Could not believe how well that was done. They pulled some crazy Paul Walker shit. Not dying in a horrible car accident, but the CG thing they did with his face. Just to get all film student-y on you. Uh, really served as a good reminder that Tony Stark has some unresolved issues with his dad and that kind of made sense of his reaction at the end where he uh, responds very violently to finding out that uh, Bucky is, is the one who killed his parents. Third and final reason. I would be doing this movie a huge disservice if I didn't fucking talk about how perfect it is on a technical level. Everything from the impeccably timed writing to the amazingly choreographed fight scenes to the on-point humor to the gorgeous costume design and to the fucking incredible acting. I could go on and on. All the fundamentals of good filmmaking are here and they are damn near perfect. But backtracking a little bit to when I said amazingly choreographed fight scenes, holy fucking shit does this movie have a fight scene at the end of its second act that will blow your balls or and fucking tits off. Seriously, it's the greatest thing I've seen in a long, long time. Gonna have to comment on the fight sequences just because they were so incredible. Beautifully shot, incredibly choreographed. And I really liked how they kind of started out very tightly shot, kind of reminiscent of almost like a born Supremacy, born Ultimatum, Jason Bourne. That's the guy. Uh, reminded me of those films. Uh, and then kind of built to the crescendo moment of uh, the big fight at the airport scene, which was just just amazing. When I said, if for nothing else, go see it for Spider-Man, go see it for the new Spider-Man, and go see it for this fucking fight scene, because it, like I said, it will blow your tits slash balls slash man tits off. It's fucking awesome. And you know what? We'll extend that list of three to four, because that fight deserves to be its own reason on my list. Absolutely. Chris Hemsworth was notably absent from this movie, the one negative thing I can think of. Uh, not Thor, Chris Hemsworth. I could give a, I could give a shit about Thor, uh, but Chris Hemsworth wasn't in it. That kind of upset me a little bit. Not because I'm attracted to Chris Hemsworth. Not even, you know what? Being attracted to Chris Hemsworth isn't even like a gay, a straight thing. It's, it's a human experience. As a human being, you are attracted to Chris Hemsworth. As far as the story goes, I thought it was, uh, obviously it was very well, very well written. Uh, the pacing was on point. Thought there was, you know, just the right amount of comedic relief when you needed it. But it stayed in that serious tone that kind of carried the motivation of the characters. Thought that that was really successful. Um, I think the characters were well motivated. They, you know, I, I personally didn't question any of the any of the motivation they had. Um, you know, there's a lot of emotion for sure was, was a big driving force um, which I can see some people maybe not buying or thinking it's over the top but I, I, I personally I bought it and I thought it was intriguing so in summary reason number one a fresh take on the universe and some compelling ass conflict that kept me at the edge of my seat the entire fucking time reason number two the addition of two brand new heroes in the forms of spider-man and black panther reason number three the film is practically perfect on a technical level I mean that's just my opinion but that doesn't mean it's wrong right Reason number four, the ball slash tit busting fight at the end of the second act. Fucking amazing. Now that you've seen our individual comments, uh, we're back uh, to give you the final score. So, uh, should I start? You start? I'll start. Okay. So, Captain America Civil War, my score uh, is 6.5 tiers out of 7 bands. Wow, 6.5? 6.5. Uh, very good film. I uh, really enjoyed it. Definitely would recommend going to see it in theaters. I'm going to go see it again, probably. I think so. We yeah, yeah, because we we kind of we watched that thing that said it's even better on the second viewing. So yeah. I think that maybe we should definitely do that. Um, Especially with a movie that's like that big as far as effects and, and visual. Yeah, just and to sound, take it all yeah. in. Like in theaters, there's something about seeing it in theaters, like how it was 
in my opinion, how it was meant to be seen as opposed to watching it on a 15-inch laptop screen. I think mm -hmm. there's, you can't really compare and there's... And for a blockbuster you know. like that, I'd, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I would do that any day of the week. Um, so the way I'll be scoring my movies, like I said, I don't believe in a number scale. So the way I'll be doing is it's either you don't ever need to fucking see it, uh, wait till you can acquire it in a legal or non-legal way, I'm not one to judge, um, or go absolutely fucking see it in theaters. Those are my three categories. So essentially it's don't see it, home release, go see it in theaters. And Captain America Civil War gets a go fucking see it in theaters. At least once. At least once. It's fucking awesome. You like you can't I don't think I couldn't imagine a person having a bad time. Unless you hated, hated superheroes and you had you had a personal vendetta against them. I can't imagine you having a bad time in this movie. I or, can't imagine. Or if you have like really bad hemorrhoids and can't stand sitting through a two and a half hour movie. That <laughs> that would the, also the only two circumstances. If you have really bad hemorrhoids Take I, bring a donut. You, I get <laughs> Bring a donut. Uh, to sit on, not to eat. Because <laughs> that's not going to help your appetite. Anyways. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Our very first review, our very first friend review, if you will. Um, we're pretty clever. No big we're, deal. we're not dumb. Um, so, yeah, this is our first one. So, bear with us. We're, we're going to, obviously, the show is going to change and get better and stuff. And this is just our first one. we got to get one out there so everybody can say it's awful. And then we'll make it better. Yeah. So that's that's how these things. That's how video works. That's how trial and error yeah. works. We've got thick skins. Lay lay on the criticism. Come at me, bro. But I mean, you can't deny that this this whole setup is is in way less ugly. Like way less ugly. You and can't like, deny that. At least two hundred something pounds lighter. <laughs> at least. At least. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching, uh, Andrew. And I will see you later on the next episode of Frandrew. No, oh, it's the Frand review. Did I, what did I say? I said Frandrew? Frandrew. The Fran. We will see you on the next episode of the Frand review. Can't even remember the name of my own fucking show. Good. That's a good start. Bye. <laughs>